Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another video and welcome back to another cozy wrap up. The only thing that we're going to be missing in today's cozy wrap up is a drink just because I just, I didn't have the energy to go make myself something to drink tonight. But we are sitting on the floor in our usual in pajamas, always the best way to film. And we are going to talk about all the books I was able to read in August. Um, even though I was on vacation for two weeks of August, I still had a fantastic reading month, so I'm excited to share all of the books that I read with you and my thoughts. Uh, we'll jump into stats first, and then we'll jump into the actual books. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so for my stats this month, I was able to read 15 books in the month of August. So again, a fantastic reading month. I had some really good readings as well, so it was a good month all around. From those 15 books, I read 4,611 pages, which averages out to about 148 pages a day and an average book size of 307 pages. I listened to 125 hours of audiobooks. Every single book that I read this month was mixed media, meaning that I either read it with the ebook and the audiobook or the physical book and the audiobook, two formats at the same time, mixed media. <laughs> my average rating this month was a 4.2 star, so not too bad at all. As for my star ratings, I gave six five stars, six four stars, and a three three stars. No twos and no ones. As for my genre breakdowns, I don't think anyone is surprised. I read seven romances and seven fantasies and then one thriller. Then for my age breakdown, I read 10 adult books, three new adult books, one young adult book, and one middle grade. As for my representation, I read four books with disability rep, one book with mental health rep, which means that 10 of the books that I read this month had no representation in them at all. It was a pretty low month for diversity all around. I only read one book by a POC author and I read two books that had POC characters, but everything else had no POC rep at all. Same goes, unfortunately, for LGBTQI+. I only read one book this month with LGBTQI+, which means that 14 of them didn't have any. And that one book with LGBTQI+, was gay representation. I read 13 books written by women, one book written by a man, and one book written by a non-binary author. 13 of the books that I read this month, I read for the first time, and I had two rereads this month. Then for my publication years, I read two books published in 2021, four books published in 2020, two books published in 2019, five books published in 2018, and two books published in 2017. And as for my color breakdowns, I read 11 black books, two blue books, one orange book, and one purple book. And that is my stats for the month. Let's go ahead and jump into all the books that I read. And then at the very end, I will discuss my favorite book of the month. Okay, the first few books that we're going to talk about are books that I actually read on my vacation. Um, so they were all pretty lighthearted, easy, fast-paced books, which I actually enjoyed all of them, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm being honest. The first one that I read was The Risk. This is by Elle Kennedy. I actually read this one on the plane, and it was such a wonderful experience. This is the second book in the Briar U series, which is a spinoff series uh, from the Off Campus series by Elle Kennedy. It's one of my favorite sports romance, new adult college romances that I've read. It's just so fun, fast paced, entertaining. I've said this time and time again, Elle Kennedy has some of the best character work, some of the best character arcs, and just some really wonderfully sexy, hot, steamy scenes that I just love to love, you know, <laughs> they're just so good. Um, this book actually follows, mm, I'm not gonna remember her name because it's not on the back of the book, Brenna. Um, and she is the best friend of Summer, who is, the book follows, the, fir the first book in this spinoff series is, is about Summer. And this is about Summer's best friend, Brenna, who ends up following for Jake Connolly. And Jake Connolly happens to be the head team captain of the, uh, rival team to Briar University, Harvard. Um, and it's a hate to love romance. They definitely have a lot of, of really, really good banter. The only problem that I have with this book is I felt like it fell a little bit flat in the character work. In the off-campus series, the character work was stellar, fantastic, and wonderful. And I felt like the two books in the off, uh, the Briar U series kind of felt lackluster in the character development department, which is why I ended up giving it a four star and not a five star. But other than that, the book was fantastic. I loved the characters. I loved the steamy scenes. I liked the banter. Um, it was a very good, sexy book. And I definitely recommend this series if you're looking for a fun sports romance series. Then the first book that I actually read on my vacation at the resort was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This was a perfect book for vacation. It says it in the title. Um, this one follows Poppy and Alex. I believe his name is Alex, yes. Poppy and Alex, and um, ever since they were, were young and teenagers, they went on trips together, and every year they would go on a summer trip, and you know that several years ago, something happened, and they stopped going on trips and stopped talking to each other all together for two years. And finally, Poppy's had enough, and she would like to rekindle her relationship with Alex and go for one last trip to get the band back together and kind of hash out some of the things that were holding them back and the reason why they weren't speaking to each other. Um, and then in that process, they created a relationship and fell in love. It is a best friend's friends to lovers 
to non-friends to lovers situation. It was good. It was a very wonderful book. Emily Henry writes beautifully in my opinion. I loved Beach Read and I loved uh, People Meet on Vacation as well. I have to say that I liked Beach Read a little bit more than this one but I still gave this book a five star. It was absolutely wonderful. I loved Poppy and Alex as characters. I liked the uh, pacing of this book and how it was written. Uh, every other chapter you're flashing between this summer and the previous summers and every trip that they've taken up to the point where they stopped talking and after reading some reviews, some people didn't uh, love the reveal at the end and the reason why these characters stopped being what they were, but for me it felt very real and raw and how one little thing in your lives can really change how you perceive one another and how I actually think that this is like the, one of the one of those books that did mis miscommunication well because I think that if they have if they would have talked this over and really communicate with each other about their feelings and their wants and their desires, it could have been an easily made up book. But because they had so much experience with each other and so much life experience and so much writing on their their friendship, it was very hard for them to communicate with each other. And it was just so beautifully well done. Uh, the, they have the trope of um, nursing you back to health trope as well as the. Um, only one bed trope which I really enjoyed so if you like a good uh book like that you'll love it it was a fantastic romance very sweet very wonderful and it's an easy read for a vacation for sure then finally I dipped my toe back into my love Colleen Hoover with Verity and y'all this was a wild ride this was a wild ride to say the least uh every time somebody recommends this book they're like oh my gosh once you pick it up you're not gonna be able to put it down it's so crazy the twist at the end it's just a, what the heck it's a literal mindfuck this book and it was very very entertaining i will say that the plot of the story if it was just for the plot i don't think that i would have rated this book as high as i did um the plot of the book wasn't all that exciting for me it really just built up to the very end and it's the last chapter that really sends this book off the deep end and makes it what it is and i think that's the reason why it's so loved is because it comes out of left field and you don't you don't know what's real and what what isn't and i think that colleen hoover wrote this perfectly that you have this ambiguous ending but it doesn't seem like you're being gypped i i have read many of uh ambiguous endings that make you feel like okay so why did i even read that like i didn't get any answers like what the heck but this book did it well uh this one follows lowen who is a writer and um she gets a proposition one day to come and ghost write a book series a very very popular book series by an author that is no longer able to complete her work she's been in a car accident and she is um, no longer able to physically write she's still alive but not able to write and um she decides to well she's invited over to the house of the author by her husband to come take a look at Verity's work and see everything that Verity put together for her past projects and help her to continue to write the last three books in this series. However as she's staying there things in the house start to be really weird and she comes face to face with Verity herself and it's a very uncomfortable and um eerie experience at this house um and you start to see things devolve from there and you learn a lot more about Verity's life as well as Lowen's life and her husband's not Lowen's husband but Verity's husband's life um and I don't want to say too much more than that it's a very very interesting book um and it definitely I feel like it's one of those books where you have very mixed opinions some people believe one thing and some people believe another I don't know where I stand but I will say that I really enjoyed it I gave it a five star it was a fantastic book if you're looking for a book that's going to grip you and pull you in and not want you and you're not going to want to put it down this is the book for you Okay, let's jump into my two rereads, which were so fantastic this month. I am so happy that I reread them, although I will say that I'm a little bit mad at Birthday Girl, not because of the book, but because somehow um, I lost my first page. <laughs> it just decided that it didn't want to be in the book anymore, and it just fell, it just fell right out, unfortunately. But uh, I did reread Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas this month, and I really, I really enjoyed it, you guys. I give it another five star. It was amazing. I just love this book so much. This book follows Jordan who is in a relationship with, I'm not gonna remember her boyfriend. I forget his name, he's not important. <laughs> uh, she's in a relationship with this guy and um, on the day of her birthday, she ends up at a movie theater and she ends up uh, meeting this guy, Pike. And at the end of the movie, they are parting ways and Pike finds out that uh, Jordan is actually dating his son. And after a turn of events, they end up moving into Pike's house just to be able to save some money. Um, and this is actually a relationship between Jordan and Pike, her ex-boyfriend or her boyfriend's father. Um, and it's just, oh, it's so good. It's so taboo. It's an age gap romance. Plus you have the boyfriend's father trope situation going on, which makes it even more uh, steamy and spicy and questionable. But Penelope Douglas just knows how to write a good, taboo, sexy romance. This 
book oh i got my nasty sweaty prints out all over it this book brings the slow burn like no other book before it and it's just so good the angst the sexual te tension the characters are just so well done and i loved every second of it i've already re read this book and i wasn't even skimming to get to the good stuff like i just wanted to be immersed in the story it's so good it's so sweet there's some really infuriating mo moments there's some really cute moments there's some really hot moments where i just need to put the book down and think well damn it's so well done if you guys haven't read this one i highly recommend it's probably my favorite of penelope douglas so far i have read several of her works now and really enjoyed all of them but this one definitely takes the cake for my favorite and i will read it again sometime soon okay my next reread and y'all already know I loved it. And that is Hate by Madison Kate. No, I say this every time. It's by Tate James. It's the first <laughs> first book in the Madison Kate series. I would like you to uh, bask in the glory of all of those lovely, wonderful tabs. Oh my goodness, this reread was a freaking blast. Uh, I have literally explained this book in so many freaking videos, but I'm going to do it again. Um, Madison Kate, you know what? Let me just read the back. Madison Kate Danvers was murdered tonight. The words changed my life, not for the better. The, they were wrong, of course. I'm not dead, but I was set up. After being charged with a string of offenses and made an example by the, my politically minded father, I was eventually released back, in, released back into Shadow Grove with one thing on my mind, hate. Someone is going to pay for derailing my carefully laid out future. Someone is going to catch the full force of my hate. How very convenient that someone now lives in the bedroom down the hall from me. Archer Daff and his boys mess with the wrong chick, and they're about to learn just how cold Madison Kate hate can run. So that's just a a starting point of this very fantastic four book reverse harem series. Uh, three guys, one girl. It's hot. It's sexy. It's cute. I fucking love these male characters. I love Madison Kate. She's a badass, strong, independent female woman. Female woman, sure. <laughs> that I adore. But the male characters in this book just oh, they add something extra and it's so good it's so dark there's a ton of trigger warnings in this so go in with some caution but fuck me if it's not good oh my god <laughs> it is so fantastic five star wonderful reread i was looking back on my ratings for all these books and i apparently gave them all four stars lies 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 it's five stars it's amazing highly recommend uh i've already got one person telling me they've read it and loved it so please please go and read it trust me you need to read it and come back and tell me that you loved it thank you very much <laughs> all right up next i read serpent and dove by shelby mahurin I really like this book. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did, but I really enjoyed it. I actually read this off of a Clint slash Sterling recommendation. Sterling recommended it to Clint, who read it and then recommend recommended it to me, and I really enjoyed it. I didn't think that I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. I'm checking to see what my rating is on this one, because I actually can't remember. Okay, I wanted to make sure. I did end up giving this book a five star. I really, really enjoyed this. If you don't know what this is about, this follows... Man, I'm terrible with names. Um, Lou... LeBlanc, uh, who is a witch, and Reed Diggory, who is a witch hunter. And after a turn of events, um, they end up married. And Reed doesn't know that Lou is a witch. And so you're following the t her perspective of trying to keep secrets, but also somehow falling in love with the man that is tasked and is, is made to believe to hate what she is. And um, it's a very interesting book. There is a very, um, very big emphasis on religion in here which is not my favorite thing to read about but I felt like in this particular aspect it was well done I enjoyed it I thought the characters were very very cute um I liked seeing them fall in love and create this relationship that was very interesting because you knew the secrets the whole time and you're just waiting for that last sheet to drop and you're trying to figure out how this character is going to come back from all of that and it was just very well done I really enjoyed it I'm really excited for book two I'm supposed to read that this month and I really enjoyed it I don't know much more to say about this without spoiling things but it's really good it's a very thick book so be ready for that but very well done Okay, my second to last physical book of this month, and that was In an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. Uh, this is the fourth book in the Wayward Children series. <laughs> I didn't love this one as much as I think that I wanted to love this one. I, you know, let's talk about it. I feel like as the book series goes along, I'm liking the books less and less. And I think that is because of the fact that the first book has this really strong found family, um, aspect to it that gives it the charm and the beauty because you have so many different characters that are so very different a very diverse uh cast of characters and then as you break down the books you get less and less of that experience and i like seeing the portal world i think that they're really cool they're very well thought out there's a lot of planning and thought and intricacy that goes into making these worlds but it's just not my favorite this one in particular i didn't love Especially because I didn't get any of the characters from the first book other than Lundy, who this one follows. This one follows Lundy. Uh, if you read the first book, you'll know that she's one of the teachers at the school for Eleanor's uh, Wayward's, what, Eleanor's School for Wayward Children. She's one of the teachers. Um, and she's a very interesting character. 
um i'm not going to spoil like anything about her story because i don't want to <coughs> excuse me i don't want to spoil the book but um i just didn't necessarily really care for her story i didn't i didn't want to really know about she wasn't a character that really intrigued me even though her circumstances are very very interesting i just didn't really care to know and um the actual storyline of this was just it was kind of weird and far out there which is not unlike shauna mcguire's work obviously they write very intri intricate weird stuff but i don't know it just didn't it just didn't do everything that i wanted it to do i don't really know how to explain my feelings on this other than to say it didn't measure up to the other books in the series um it's not as bad as actually i don't know which one i like mo i like less um, I think I read, I rated, uh, the pink one. I can't remember what it's called. It has clouds on it. <laughs> no, it's not Contumbling Down. I don't know. The third one. Um, I think I rated that one a four star and this one ended up being a three star. So I think that overall rating wise, this one ended up lower. And I think that I agree with that statement. Um, I don't know. I'm having a hard time with this series. I'm going to continue it and read books four, five and six, but I just wish that I loved this one more. I rambled on about that book for quite some time, so let's jump into this next series that I started and finished back to back to back, and that was the Sweet Obsession series. I, I actually don't remember what the series is called, but the first book is Sweet Obsession, the second book is Sweet Retribution, and the third book is Sweet Salvation. This is by Callie Rose. This is a dark uh, reverse harem series that I read, and I got this book off TikTok no one is surprised. TikTok seems to run everybody's reading life nowadays, especially if you like dark, smutty romances. Um, this one follows, I'm not going to really be able to remember these people's names, okay? Um, but the heroine is the, I think that you're following her perspective throughout the entire book, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure um, that you're following this heroine who um, is coming home from work one day and as she's as she's at this club she, maybe she's not at work i don't know she's at this club and she spots this guy that she thinks is really attractive and then he disappears into the crowd she ends up going outside to smoke a cigarette and when she's out there she's that guy again and on that day somebody is rolling up to do a drive-by and shoot him and she doesn't really know why or what moved her to do so but she ends up taking the shots for these men that are standing on the corner three shots and um because of that she ends up losing her arm and so she, this is one of the books that has disability rep she is an amputee um and she survives the, the night miraculously two years later she is almost mugged by somebody and these men from two years ago come out of the shadows and save her from it and then they end up back in this very world 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 what, what, what am i trying to say whirlwind whirlwind of a relationship where they're now back into her life and she's trying to figure out First of all, where did you go for two years and why are you back? And why do you seem so obsessed with my life? And it's a reverse harem book, so you can kind of guess from all that that they end up creating a relationship all through men with her. Um, and the series really takes off from there. It's a very uh, complex, not, I wouldn't say complex. It's a very interesting storyline that goes way, way, way off. It's basically a dark mafia romance. Um, and I just, it was okay. I gave the books, I don't know, I gave them four stars all in all. And I think that the rating stands. Uh, the plot was good. The writing was good. The sex scenes, hot. So for my enjoyment level, yes, I gave it a four star. I thought they were very enjoyable reads. Quick, fast paced, easy. Um, I will say that after I thought about it a little more, it is is very, very similar to the Madison Kate series, but less good. <laughs> I will definitely say that. Um, it has very many similarities, which I'll probably talk about in a video that I have coming up if you like this and you like this. But um, yeah, I liked it. It was good. It was fast paced. It was sexy. I read all three books in a day and a half, so that can tell you how much I enjoyed it. Um, four stars all around. If you are interested in a book like that, then I recommend it. <laughs> all right, and then I, le I read another really, really crazy romance, and that is Four Psychos. I don't remember the author of this one, but again, I got this recommendation off of TikTok. Um, and this one is really, really weird. This one follows a girl, but I cannot remember her name. The heroine of this uh, book is a ghost. <laughs> she's a ghost and she's been a ghost for five and a half years. And prior to that five and a half years of her ghostly life, she doesn't remember anything of her past, but she has been stuck and tethered to this group of five guys four or five guys, I can't remember, four or five men that are um, soul reapers, basically, and they are tasked with reaping souls, and she's been following them around for the past five and a half years, because if she leaves their presence for more than 10 minutes, she starts to become fuzzy and lose her presence in the, the world, but they can't see her until one day one of the men is in danger, and she does what she can 
does what she can what does what she can to stop um what's happening to him and she becomes more earthly she can kind of slip between being a real life woman and a ghost in between but she becomes like their guardian angel and you follow them as they try to figure as you try to figure out what these men do and why they're connected to each other and the very interesting paranormal world that they live in um it was weird <laughs> i think i gave it a three star yeah i gave this book a three star it was strange it was strange but i'm so intrigued to read more the next book is three trials which i'll be reading for the fall into reading a thon prompts for reading an ebook and art or an audiobook so i will give you my thoughts on that next month when i understand a little bit more about what the series is about but it's weird and um i was sad to say that in this reverse harem series there was no smut in the first book and i was a little bit disappointed but i'm intrigued enough to move on so there's not much to say about that one i'll give you guys more thoughts as i read through the series but weird and i can't say if i recommend it yet <laughs> all right my last physical book and then we'll move into the last three books that I read this month. The last physical book is Amari and the Night Brothers. I did it, y'all. I finally freaking read this book. You guys have been screaming at me to read it um, when I didn't pick it up in my last TBR that I had it in, but I read it and I gave it a five star. It was amazing. It was such a fantastic, good middle grade. I definitely, uh, I totally agree with all of the people saying that it gives you Nevermore vibes. Yes. Men in Black vibes. Absolutely. Um, it's just so, it was so good. It was so good. It was so diverse. We had some really fantastic characters. We had some twists and turns. Um, this one follows Amari, who his, her brother has been missing. Quint has been missing for about six months and nobody knows where he's gone. And then one day after coming home from school, Amari finds a briefcase uh, in the back of her brother's closet that tells her that she has been invited to uh, join the Bureau of, of, of Supernatural Affairs, I believe is what it's called. And uh, when Amari gets there, she realizes that her brother is a lot more in this world than she thought. He's very, very well known, very famous, and she ha he happens to be part of a duo, uh, a team of two, well, him and somebody else, that have gone missing. And um, she's going to try to do whatever she can to find her brother, but also to fit into this new magical world. Um, she definitely plays a big part in this world. She's uh, She has some magic that many people aren't supposed to have and it kind of thrusts her into a weird position in this academy and it's just following her at the school trying to figure out about her brother finding some really great friends but also battling a lot of issues with the people around her um this book talks a lot about racism and um just what it's like to grow up in the projects and how people look at you and how um people judge you based off the color of your skin. I thought that was talked about really well in this middle grade book. And I just really loved it. It was a great book. B.B. Alston did a great job at writing such a wonderful, well-rounded character. And I really, really loved it. I cannot wait for book two. I have a lot of questions. Um, please give it to me now. But thank you for everyone that was screaming at me, recommending to me to read it. I heard you. I listened and I loved it. So thank you. <laughs> And finally, the last three books that I read were all part of a series, so I'm going to talk about them together. And I'm not going to remember the author's name, but this is the Bad Girl series. The first one is where bad girls go. No, no. It was, it's the Good Girl series. I It gets me confused every time. It's The first one is where good girls go to die, where bad girls girl to, go to fall, and uh, where bad boys are something. <laughs> where bad boys are ruined. Yeah. Um... It was a interesting romance and I'm actually glad that I read it because it makes me think that I want to read more books in this setting and that is books about tattoo artists or in a tattoo shop, things like that. I really enjoyed it. They are companion novels so they don't necessarily uh, go together but all of the characters in this book are in the first book and you see them throughout the rest of the story so I would definitely recommend reading them together uh, in order if you can but if not they are companion novels. Uh, I got this recommend recommendation who would have thought on TikTok. I actually got the recommendation for the second book on TikTok and I started to read it and realized it was book two so I went back and read book one. I do re I do stand by and say that the second book is the best book in the series. Uh, the first book was kind of lackluster it also involved some of my favorite, unfavorite, some of my non-favorite tropes. I can't talk today, and that is cheating. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I liked the second book. The men were hot. <sighs> sex scenes. Oh, my God. There was one sex scene in book two. I was sitting at work listening to this audiobook, and I had turned it off. I had to turn it off. It was so hot. <laughs> and it was actually the scene that somebody was talking about on TikTok that got me to read the book. And it was so well done. Oh, my. <sighs> uh, these ones are all, like, best friends boyfriend well the first two are best friends um whatever best friend sister best friend brother and then the last one is like a 
we're not supposed to be together opposites attract type of, type of romance and it was just it was really cute it was fun all three books overall were really really well done i ended up giving uh the first one three stars and the last two four stars so yes good stuff highly recommend if you like romances like that steamy sexy romances that aren't necessarily super dark but do have a touch of emotions to them um and deal with like the best friend brother best friend sister situation really enjoy that <laughs> All right, before I just lose all my marbles, let's talk about my favorite book of the month and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, first we're gonna talk about my high contenders because this was really hard this month for me to choose. I didn't pick my rereads because I felt like that's kind of cheating. I already knew I was going to love them, but this one, if, if I didn't read any other good books, these definitely would have been high up there. And the one that I thought I was going to pick until something else knocked it out and that was People We Meet On Vacation by Emily Henry. Loved this book. But the winner had to be Amari and the Night Brothers by B. Alston. It was so good, so fantastic, so amazing. Like, I'm so excited for book two. And I'm so, so happy that there are middle grade books out there like this. Like, I wish that I could have found books like this when I was younger about black, strong characters, female characters at that, that are just good representation for people like myself, young kids like myself, that can go out there and read a book and see themselves represented. I love, love, love that. And it was just so well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For recommending me recommending me wrecking i can't talk <laughs> thank you for recommending me to read this one and i'm so so excited for book two and i'm hoping that anyone else that picks this up loves this as much as i did all right that is the end of this very very messy wrap up i hope that you guys enjoyed it honestly i'm not surprised all my videos at this point are messy and it, for you guys that stick around and stick with me you guys are true ones and i love you to pieces but uh, let me know if you guys have read any of these books that i talked about today what your thoughts are on them i would love to hear your guys' thoughts let me know how you guys did in the month of august and the favorite what favorite book you read in august i would love to know your favorite book of the month that would be great but other than that that is the end of this video i really really hope that you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up don't forget to subscribe before you leave and of course leave any comments questions and suggestions in the comment section below and i will see you in the next video bye